can't start without ringing the bell. There we go. Now we can start. Thank you, Sue. So Reformation Sunday is what this is. I forgot to plug this in, Janet. Reformation Sunday. What is Reformation Sunday? Anybody? Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Halloween! Halloween! Oh my gosh. That's right. All Hallows Eve. All Saints. All Saints. It's probably got something to do with reforming. Something. Yeah. Indeed. What was reformed? Well, something related to Martin Luther. Yeah. Or as Charlie used to say in my confirmation class when she was this tall, Martin Luther! <laughs> Martin Luther! So people were living with uh, tremendous fear, and the church was not helping, but harming people spiritually by creating fear of hell and purgatory, and then raising money off of that fear by selling things called indulgences. So for a price... You could buy indulgences for the sake of your loved ones whom you feared were in purgatory so they could be released early. Now, that's not helpful. But it worked. It worked to raise a lot of money. And St. Peter's and the Vatican are there largely because of this practice. Martin Luther was just a little parish priest up in the hinterlands of northern Germany. And uh, <clears throat> he heard of this practice, and he, was, uh, he, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. Um, so he went to see for himself and found that, indeed, somebody just in the next burg over was selling indulgences to some of his parishioners, and he was outraged. And he determined that this must not have been an official policy of the Vatican or of the Pope, and so he walked, I don't know, a thousand miles or so, to Rome to find out. And there he found out it was true. And so on Halloween, he went to his own church door and nailed a paper to it with 95 protests <clears throat> about the practices of the church. And that changed not just the church, but it changed the history of the Western world, and indeed the whole world. Reform. <clears throat> but at the core of that protest, and what evolved to be more and more clear, was this notion of radical grace. That there's nothing to do, or achieve, or accomplish, to be able to abide in God's love. Nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. Nothing. And there's nothing to accomplish or achieve in order to abide fully in God's love. Why? Because God's love simply is. It is. And the whole point of Jesus Christ's teaching 
was to communicate that. So, happy Reformation Day. There's nothing you can do. God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Because God's love is. Because God's love is, we are. I don't think I don't think any of the songs are familiar to us. Maybe one? Bless the Lord. Let's run through Bless the Lord. Hi, everybody on Zoom. Andrea, are you recording? Andrea's not feeling well this morning, so she's at home. But she's running the Zoom. Try it again? Okay. One more time. in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. We give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters. By your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. Above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O oh Christ the healer, we have come. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. that we're, print, we're um, playing around a little bit with the words of introduction for the prayer of the day. And I want to stress that I think it's entirely right that we say God is in you and also in you. But we can also say you are in God, for in God we live and move and have our being, according to Paul. 
God is our very life, the life within, above, around, below, all that is. And so today we're going to say, you are in God and also in you. You are in God. Mark 10. In you we live and move and have our being. You are the intelligence that gives us intellect. You are the sensate one that gives us sensation. You are the conscious one who gives us consciousness. You are the spirit that gives us spirit. You are love by which we know and have and are love. You are the creator by which we manifest. As beings, you are the provider who has given us this beautiful world to tend that cares for us. You are the water of life, you are the air that we breathe. Gracious one. Can't you see? Can't you see? The Gospel of Yeshua healing a blind man. They came to Jericho, and Yeshua and his disciples and a large crowd We're leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Yeshua of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Yeshua, son of David, have mercy on me. But many shushed him. As it says, Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Yeshua stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling to you. And so, throwing off his cloak, He sprang up and came to Yeshua. And Yeshua said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, My teacher, my rabbi, let me see again. And Yeshua said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Can't you see? 
Can't you see? First three words of a pretty famous song. Can't you see? Can't you see? What that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll stop there. Can't you see? We use that phrase all the time. Seeing and not seeing. Seeing and not seeing. It's central as a metaphor, even in our language, our very language. I see, we might say, when we understand something. Sometimes we say, I see, when we don't understand something, but we want to appear that we do understand something. Oh, I see. (laughs) Oh, but don't you see? Can't you see? Oh, and so that metaphor is powerful and meaningful. And it's been used in poetry and mythology and plays, literature, movies, all the time. You know, this interplay between seeing and not seeing. And often you'll have a character who's blind. And yet they see. They see here. They have insight, we might say. They have insight. Going back to the ancient play Oedipus Rex from 400 plus years before Jesus. Where that play between blindness and seeing, seeing and blindness is central to driving the play forward. Oedipus, who was abandoned as a child by his natural parents, was raised not knowing who his parents were. And by fate, became king of Thebes. Still not knowing that the king who had died was his natural father. And so he succeeded his father without even knowing it. And a plague comes upon the city and the country. And like they did in those days, he went to consult a seer, a prophet, you might say. And this seer was blind, Tyrannius. Blind. A blind seer, a seer who was blind. It's beautiful, right? And so he consults this seer who sees right away what's going on and realizes and does not want to tell the king the truth. And the truth was the reason the plague was there was because Oedipus, the king, had killed his own father without knowing it in a confrontation on the road. And once dead, and once Oedipus had come to the throne, he married his own mother, the widow of the king. And this was the truth. The terrible truth, the truth that Tyrannius did not want to tell. But Oedipus demanded and demanded, and finally he learned part of the truth, the part where he had killed his own father. And for revealing this, Tyrannius received scorn and mockery. You're nothing but a blind, false prophet. But eventually, of course, Oedipus does learn the truth by fate. That indeed he had killed his own father and married his own mother. And when he finds out this horrible truth, he cannot deal with it And he goes out and he gouges his own eyes out and becomes a blind beggar. 
Now, I like to think that the gospel writer of Mark knew that story. After all, it was hundreds of years before Jesus that it was written. And it had been revived in the Roman Empire by the poet Seneca. But it doesn't matter whether he knew it or he didn't. It plays on the same theme, you see? Yeshua comes across a blind beggar, nothing but a blind beggar, who's off in the back of the crowd. Who calls out in desperation for he must have seen something though he was blind he must have seen something and heard something about this one about this one who was said to be the son of David and some sort of a king. And so he cries out, like over there on Snelling Avenue, in front of the Taco Bell. He cries out, have mercy on me. And the people shush him just like they had previously in the same chapter to the children. Leave him alone, leave him alone. He's too important for you. Shush. But he cried out all the louder. And Yeshua stops and hears him. Hears him. Not just hears him. Not just hears the yell. He hears the heart. See? There's hearing and then there's hearing. There's seeing and then there's seeing. You see? Hear me? He hears him. And he's moved to stop. He's moved to stop. And he says, Bring him to me as he had with the children. Bring him to me. And they bring him. And Yeshua says, what do you want? I love that question. Wouldn't it be obvious? Wouldn't it be obvious? <laughs> no. What do you want? And he does not say, you know, I want great riches. You know, the, the, the story of the rich young ruler just precedes this, too. The rich young ruler who could not let go of his possessions and follow. He had too much wealth to really hear and to really see. And this beggar, I mean, he was a blind beggar. He wasn't just blind, he was a beggar. That means, like, poorer than poor. He could ask for riches. He didn't. He asked to be able to see again. Now listen to what Yeshua says. He says, go. Your faith has made you well. Not, I made you well. He doesn't say, I made you well. But like any great healer knows, any doctor, nurse, knows that healing comes from elsewhere. That healing is something that happens not from me to you, but between us somehow. Life is greater 
than our understanding of it. Life is greater. And the restoration of life, the healing of life that we from time to time experience is mysterious but real. And we know it when it happens. Your faith has made you of something inside Bartimaeus, inside the blind beggar, something inside was activated and then shared. And then empowered a healing to happen. To happen. Now, to regain one's sight, what a wonderful thing. What a beautiful thing. But it's not the greatest thing. It's great, but it's not the greatest thing. For, as we know, Bartimaeus would lose his sight again. Perhaps not until the end of his life, but certainly then. And so, in a way, the restoration of his sight remains, most importantly, not a physical thing, but a spiritual thing. That he gained sight that would not die, that could not die. Faith, meaning trust in God and those God sends to us. That kind of sight can never die. How do you see the world? How do you see the world? How are you seeing the world right now? How do you see it? How do you see the human race right now? How do you see the people around you? How do you behold reality? How do you behold? What is your perspective? What do you see when you look? What are you seeing? Let me suggest simply this. For this is the core of both healing and seeing truly. Let me suggest that seeing with the eyes of love is the way to get up and to follow in. And that's a gift available to all of us all the time. To see with the eyes of love is world changing and self changing and others changing. And you've experienced it. You've experienced it. You know it because you have been beheld with the eyes of love. And you know the transforming power of that kind of look, that kind of beholding.
Stevie Wonder wrote that song, performed it. Um, the blind seer, Tom said, Stevie Wonder. It's from this album called Inner Visions. Inner Visions. Download it on your favorite. No, never. Oh, we have a we have a hymn of the day. Yes, we do. What is it? Come and find a quiet center. All right. Come and find a quiet center. Bye. 
Please rise for the prayers of the people. Gracious one, hear our heart's longings. Hear our prayers in faith. To you, O God of love. For our world, help us to see with eyes of love, even in the midst of the bloodshed, the cursing, the casting out, the oppression, the injustices. Help us to see beneath, above, and beyond those things to the love that's always possible. God, in your mercy, bring an end to the wars killing so many innocent people. Bring an end through dialogue, through the efforts through the efforts of leaders. Regardless their intentions, bring peace to lands in war. God in your mercy. Help us to see beyond enmity through the eyes of Christ. God in your mercy. Help us to understand the futility of solving problems through violence. God, in your mercy, help us to see the futility of greed and accumulation. God, in your mercy, we pray now for, from our own hearts we pray, aloud or in our hearts, for these persons and situations. Jim and for Jim, God in your mercy. For Shelley, for Elaine's family and Steve's family, Witsky family, and for Chase, God in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. Let's share it.
Please rise if you're able. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, and remember me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for everyone, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and remember me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared and everyone is welcome. given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ remind us of that boundless grace by which we all live and heal. Amen. Announcements. I know we have birthdays to sing, so we'll do that in a little bit. Um, we do have a couple of special events coming up. Uh, next week, by the way, is uh, All Saints Sunday, and we have a baptism. Yay! A Widerski bas- baptism. And uh, so th- we're looking forward to that. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll honor the people our loved ones who have died in the last year um, in a special way. We'll remember them, and they will gather with us. So that, And it's also daylight savings time, so um, unless you remember to fall back, you're going to come early. <laughs> Let's see. What else we got going on? We have on the 17th our annual meeting in a potluck fellowship. Get to know you. So... Especially if you're newer to the congregation, please make a point of carving out just a little time at the end of the service and the brief annual meeting that we'll have to go downstairs and to share food and fellowship. What else? We have a sound bath next week. A sound bath. A sound bath. Yes, a sound bath. So that's next Tuesday. This Tuesday? Next. This Tuesday? This Tuesday. This Tuesday, the 29th, I think. This Tuesday, the 29th. We have a sound bath, 7 to 8 o'clock. If you haven't been, do it. Do it. You'll thank yourself. You will thank yourself. You just have to show up. Show up. There's nothing nothing to do. It's like God's love. There's nothing you can do about it. You just show up and enjoy the vibrations that he creates, which are pretty amazing. Um, So... There's an election coming up. Please vote. Birthdays. We have Carol Johnson. Here, I'm going to turn the I'm going to turn the camera so Carol can see you as you sing to her. Carol Johnson, Connie Austis, Astrid. Matheson, who's not here, but Tom is and can carry the vibes back to Astrid. Okay, Carol, Connie, Astrid. Got it? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carol, Connie, and Astrid. Happy birthday. sing our closing hymn. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. 843. Rise if you're able.
May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may God's countenance be lifted up upon us, giving us peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love in the world.